This is Friendster in 2002, and this is Friendster in 2022. Friendster was once the hottest thing in social networking. However, due to its inability to keep up with user demand and the rise of Facebook, it was eventually shut down. Friendster, MySpace, HiFi, and Orkut were all contending for the title of king of the social network in 2002. Friendster appeared to be the winner in what was previously a graveyard of failed attempts to construct social networks with over 3 million subscribers in less than a year. Many people believe that Friendster had won the race. Friendster's claim to the monarchy became dubious after the establishment of Facebook in 2004, and its story took a gloomy turn. Jonathan Abrams, a Canadian computer programmer, founded Friendster in March 2002. The website was created in a basement with 10 friends and launched later that month. Within a few weeks, it had grown to several hundred people, and by early 2003, it had surpassed 3 million users. Friendster was the first social media network to reach out to the general public. Friendster's major goal was to allow people from all over the world to engage and socialize with old and new friends. That was very cool in 2002, but I suppose in today's environment, it's still very basic. As a software engineer, Abrams joined Netscape in 1996, which was sold to AOL for $10 billion in 1998. Following that, he took on tech responsibilities at several Valley-based startups. Abrams came up with the idea for Friendster when his girlfriend left him. He eventually signed up for Match.com, but the process was exceedingly frustrating for him. He established Friendster as a method to surf through his friends' address books for good-looking girls. One of Friendster's initial investors said in an interview with the New York Times, Hundreds of media sources including Time Magazine, Esquire, Vanity Fair and Entertainment Weekly contributed to Friendster's growth. Abrams was even invited to appear on Jimmy Kimmel Live as a result of the media attention. During the broadcast, he even claimed that the founders of Yahoo had never been on a late-night talk show. Are you enjoying the video so far? Be sure to subscribe to Fixed and ring the bell to stay up to date with new untold stories of companies and businesses. Friendster was successful in raising its first ever institutional round of funding around the same time. PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel, former Yahoo CEO Tim Kugel, who also joined Friendster's board of directors and others invested a little more than $1 million in the company. However, renowned investors weren't the only ones who liked the company. Google made a $30 million offer to buy Friendster just days after the fundraising round was announced. Abrams declined because he anticipated Friendster's value would skyrocket in the future. Regrettably, he would not be present to witness the vision come true. The board, which included valley giants like John Doerr and Bob Cagle, grew increasingly frustrated with Abrams' behavior. Instead of focusing on the several difficulties that baffled Friendster, the entrepreneur was seen attending parties. For example, at one time, the firm's servers were so overburdened that loading a page took 40 seconds. Abrams resigned as CEO in April 2004 and was replaced by Tim Kugel, who had recently joined the company's board of directors. Kugel barely stayed in his job for three months and he was rarely seen in the workplace. Scott M. Sasa, who had previously served as president of NBC Entertainment, was named Kugel's successor. Friendster continued to overlook its most irritating flaws under Sasa's leadership, instead offering features that no one actually required, such as net calling service or college campuses. Sasa was relieved of his duties in May 2005, less than a year after his appointment. Taekwon, who was previously the vice president of product and technology at Interactive Corp's CitySearch.com, took his position. In addition, five of Friendster's 55 employees were laid off. Kwon was able to halt the damage to some extent. Friendster rebuilt his website under his supervision, incorporating many of the features that made MySpace so famous, such as ability to post blog articles. Kent Lindstrom, who joined MySpace as chief financial officer, shortly after it was formed eventually replaced Kwon. Friendster started focusing on the building blocks that worked with Lindstrom at the forefront. For the first time, this meant expanding into Southeast Asia, which accounted for the majority of Friendster's user and growth. The corporation created many language versions of its website and even established local offices in places such as the Philippines. Friendster later filed for and received a number of patents that it had previously applied for. Friendster registered five patents during the next two years, all of which were related to general social media usage. Despite being overtaken by networks like Facebook and Twitter, one thing Friendster still had was a high number of users. Friendster offered social media networking firms the portfolio of its patents in 2009. The most active was Facebook, which obtained more than 18 Friendster patents. 
In August 2008, the firm recruited Richard Kimber, previously Google's Managing Director of Sales and Operations for Southeast Asia, as its newest CEO to capitalize on the firm's expansion in Asia. Friendster had also raised another round of funding from IDG Ventures, contributing another $20 million to its balance sheet in addition to the hiring of Kimber. Friendster had around 75 million users at the time, up from 45 million users just a year before. After going through ups and downs in its online social networking career, it was eventually purchased by MOL Global, a Malaysian firm, for $26.4 million in 2009. It was a significant step forward in Friendster's long journey. Friendster appeared to be on the verge of resurrecting and competing with social networking sites like Facebook for a brief while, but it was not meant to be. Friendster evolved from the social networking site to a social game platform in 2011. Its primary focus had changed away from socializing and towards entertainment. Users' old accounts were intact, but personal information such as pictures were deleted. Friendster offered its users some time to back up their data before deleting it entirely. It all seemed hopeless at first, but it didn't last long, as it was shut down within a few years. Believe it or not, Friendster had huge intentions to launch a college edition, launch a newsfeed, and build a social graph. However, these ambitious concepts seldom made it past the proposal stage, due in part to technical obstacles and in part to investor interest. Regrettably, these features are responsible for Facebook's current status as a social media giant. Friendster went out of business in 2015 after a long digital existence. What began as a groundbreaking social networking service was subsequently acquired by MOL Global and then converted into a gaming platform, and was eventually a flop. The demise of Friendster was hardly unexpected. From afar, everyone could see that the only way for Friendster to go was downhill, and it collapsed. Abrams stayed busy in the startup investment world by founding Nuzzle, a personalized news curation platform. He's currently the co-founder and managing partner of Founders Den and 8-Bit Capital, San Francisco's highly exclusive workplaces and communities for startups and investors. He's also a board member of Girls in Tech and an investor in over 50 startups. In 2015, once considered the pioneer of social networking, Friendster died when it was shut down forever. For more untold stories about companies and businesses, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.